This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the uh, Sorgatron Media Studio in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. This is a show where we talk with people in and around and to prevent in the prefer independent professional ass wrestling <laughs> see i do need the coffee uh but of course you can check out everything over at wrestlingmayhemshow.com check out this and other great wrestling podcasts about everything all around the industry and as well as over on indie wrestling.us and check out the new indie wrestling.us network uh and uh, you where you'll hear the voice of our guest tonight on uh, rise of wrestling as part of that uh, seven day free trial over there and also please drop us a line good times at wrestling mayhem show.com or 412206 wms zero and the social media us indie wrestling on twitter mayhem show on twitter and uh, all the facebook pages for uh, uh, the live streams of these interviews on the indie wrestling.us facebook and other podcasts for wrestling over at wrestling mayhem show uh, facebook as well uh so this week we have a returning uh guest that has been doing so much since we've had him on this show in particular and uh, we have ha- had him on the wrestling mayhem show when cars haven't been on fire down on the highway <laughs> getting back from west virginia because he's he's a busy busy man hitting the road a lot for various reasons in and out of pro wrestling and we'll get into a little bit of that the yeah. rev ron hunt joining us it's good to be in back the studio can you hear the applause or can you hear it? yeah <laughs> it's good to be back in we're working on that studio audience concept here we got the room for it unless you got all the space we just line up the chairs get the ladies of the night come in and there we go that sounds like a band I said, so you you need a band jay leno show has a band late night show has you need a band sorry it's a guy with a guitar maybe you know yeah, yeah we might work. have to make a call we could work and i know some people we've done some music videos not the one with virgil that's I mean, we won't get into virgil. Oh, okay <laughs> not him with the mc hammer pants no on. what <laughs> There, there's one out there. Really? I think that's outside of one that he was on a drum set. I think there's, there, a, there's, there's one. So out I there. did the one with the drum set. Yes. And then somebody did there like might a be rap video. One. Are you talking about the rap video with yes. him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's different. First, both Virgil and and Ric Flair have done rap videos. What is I, this? I, I, I feel like I'm I'm losing my stuff. I've been doing this thing wrong like all these years. <laughs> you need to do a rap. Uh, I need to, I need to do a rap video. You need a rap video. <laughs> I totally need to do rap video. Uh, I have a friend that does folk music, and he's doing a new music video. Maybe we can fit you in there somewhere. I'm down. I don't know the concept yet, so <laughs> we'll put, we'll figure it out as we go. We just call it on the fly. There you go. There you go. That's kind of how we shoot his videos. Uh, but anyways, uh, but no, you've been into a, a lot. Uh, I think I don't think we've had, we've had a good conversation with you since yeah. you popped up with some uh, uh, shots at uh, Ring of Honor. Yeah, uh, especially when they're coming through over the past year or so. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, it's been a, a pretty amazing opportunity. That was uh, actually for the global. Wars tour, I mm-hmm. believe, in uh, November of 2017. Um, had a pretty cool opportunity. I think they hit uh, New York one of the days, or in Pittsburgh the other day, and like, they were in Columbus the, the following day, and uh, pretty much went up there, and it was, it was actually pretty cool, because, you know, you, you know, I've, I've had um, some pretty cool opportunities over the last few times, um, with just being invited to try out and, you know, just continue to get your face seen, and uh, just go there to, you know, pay your dues and just say whatever you need, just feel free to let me know. It doesn't matter what it is, you know, we'll do it. And uh, one of the uh, referees, Todd Sinclair, said, hey, Rev, you got your stuff, right? I'm like, yeah, it's like, all right, cool. You got a match? I'm like, cool. It was uh, actually a real, real good friend of mine from uh, the Tennessee area, Derek Neal. Um, initially, we were supposed to have a one-on-one match. We, you know, we do our thing. We, you know, we meet with each other and everything. We go get something to eat. Well, actually, actually, sorry, let me, let me backtrack. There's, there's a pretty cool story about this. So we set up the ring and everything. We cut for lunch. We're all walking around columbus uh we we uh go to jimmy john's and it's like me their one ref paul turner uh will osprey and like two other people were there and you know it was like oh man we have bloody name yeah, yeah. and uh so i'm eating and i'm like all right this is cool wait wait, wait is, is that will osprey ordering jimmy john's uh, yeah so 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 it, so it was it was it was pretty much like we get there and he's like hey rev i don't know what i'm gonna get you know what you're gonna get and i'm i'm like no, nah, man, I'm just amazed that you, you know, like, remember my name? Like, I didn't even do anything, man. I'm just like, he's like, oh, man, oh, oh excuse me, sir, do you, do you have uh, avocados? And I'm like, man, it's like the coolest way I've ever heard anyone say the word avocados. Like, whatever I'm getting, I'm just going to put avocados on it. And, like, this guy walks up with, like, a Bullet Club shirt on. He's like, dude, you're Will F. and Osprey. He's like, oh, yeah, fuck yeah, mate, yeah. <laughs> 
So he's like, can I buy your sandwich? He's like, oh, I don't give a damn. Man. Yeah, buy the sandwich. And so the guy buys it, and I'm standing there. I'm like, cool. Like, I'm with him, too. Like, maybe this guy's going to buy my sandwich. And I'm waiting here, and the guy just walks away. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I'll buy my sandwich. <laughs> and uh, so long story short, we get back. You know, I get, like, this nice meaty sandwich. I'm like, this is going to last me throughout the night, then drive home. And I actually went with uh, uh, referee uh, uh, Joe Mandek. And um, so we get there, and then Todd Sinclair's like, hey, you got your stuff? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right, you're going to have a match. I'm like, I just ate all this food. Like, I really don't believe in eating during, like, if I have a show. I just, I'll yeah, munch yeah. on something very minute. I don't eat, eat. But, like, I ate a big, large, full sandwich. Um, they say I have a match. I'm like, okay, I'm going to look fat. Like, I ha- already have white tights. I'm going to look fat now. You guys are going to have cameras on me. And initially, it was uh, myself and Derek Neal from Tennessee. Um, we were initially going to have a match. We get our thing going, you know, we're comfortable, we're finally breathing. They come back and say, never mind, it's going to be a triple threat. We're going to add cheeseburger too. And I'm like, all right, that's cool. I guess we got to switch the whole thing up again. So, you know, but I mean, we had, we had, a, we had a great thing, um, great learning experience. You know, we were able to feed off each other. Uh, cheeseburger, he, he, to, to me, even now, he's so underrated, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, like he's so, and like for his size and everything. And then just the amount of knowledge that he's had, that he's had from people that he's trained from, you know, knowledge that's been passed on to him through like Juice and Thunder Liger and, and, and other people, so much knowledge. And he helped us out a lot, gave us a lot of good feedback. A lot of other guys behind the scenes gave us a lot of good feedback. And uh, long story short, fast forward, had a couple cool opportunities and, and some things behind closed doors that are, that are slowly working. So right now, just trying to take it one, one step at a time, man. One step at a time. It always seems that, um, um, you know, just had some recent conversations with other people that have been doing some Ring of Honor stuff. Um, it seems they're really accepting of people with the right attitudes. Like, if if you got the right head on your shoulders, yeah. it's not hard to get into that machine. It, it's, 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 one of, it's one of those things where, you know... And um, I mean that in a good way. Yeah, like yeah. My, yeah. It, it's, it's, one, it's one of those things where, and I know there's a, there's a few people in our, in our area particularly that, that can speak either of... Um, you know, opportunities with WWE or opportunities mm-hmm. at Ring of Honor. And, uh, you know, I've been fortunate to kind of have my foot in both. And, um, you know, not to knock, you know, anyone in, in WWE, but I feel like right now the whole Ring of Honor roster itself compared to certain places that, that we were put in, a couple others like uh, like like Duke can tell you and Gannon can tell you, it kind of feels like in a way you're uh, walking Duke on the, Davi- Duke Davis Duke, Duke Davis and uh, Gannon Jones, Jones Jr. Yeah, the main, main event. Just for anybody, the any initiative, so you can check there, them there's out. A, there's a reason why they're the main event, by the way. But, you know, um, and, and they'll, they'll tell you, it, it's almost like you're walking on a little bit more eggshells there mm-hmm. um, than you are if you do have an opportunity to help out in any form or fashion behind the scenes. But at, it's, at also, it's also... A much smaller machine, yeah. Right, that, that you don't have to go through as many hoops to get into it. Not as many people, yeah. Um, trying to get in, and you know more opportunities. Yeah. So it's just a different scale of things uh, to get in there, and, and I think that, that definitely all kind of lends into that. Yeah, I, th- I think one thing that that uh, you know that I've heard people say that you know I really feel holds true is, uh, and I don't know if they said it on here. I, someone just recently said it, but I've held on to it even before that. But it's not about who you know it's about who's willing to say they know you so yeah, it, it's yeah. it's all it's all about your and attitude that's the and thing everything. too because uh you know how many times this just this year i've done shows with brutal bob evans and uh tough tony right yep. and and you know brutal bob very involved with the the, the roh dojo and in, in training he does a seminar hang with hang with bob yep. hangs with bob or is, is, which, he, which is wonderful yes every every time well for for anyone sorry just for a, a, a quick plug for anyone that has an opportunity to do a seminar with Bob or anyone that comes with Bob, like tough Timmy, uh, a couple of times they had, uh, he had cheeseburger with him as well. Mm-hmm. Well worth any type of money. I mean, in ring, out of ring, um, you know, financial character, every single aspect of wrestling, it's going to touch and each and every time it's something new every time. So well, well worth it. But yes, hang, hangs with Bob. Absolutely. But, uh, but, but I mean, he's, he's getting out there, and seeing the talent, so he can go to a Black Diamond show, a Rise Wrestling show, and he's and he's watching, right? Yeah. And he's and he's listening and everything. And and so when like you know, Frank Water comes to town, you know, and the guys do show up, absolutely, there's that connection, right? Absolutely. So it's it's one it's one of those it's one of those things to where um you know I think we all know by now or anyone that's in, that's inspiring to get into the business. Um, you know, it's not all, you know, everything's not all made of gold when you first start. No. Um, but the main thing is, you know, a great attitude 
can carry you so far. You know, they, 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 it, one thing is, is to have a great attitude. And another thing is to be coachable, be able to understand directions and, and, and fix it as soon as they give you those directions. And uh, one of those things is, and, and with ROH, with the, the seminars that they do, if anyone's that had, that had the opportunity or, or, you know, a lot, a lot of people that I know have, have been there from our area, they'll, they'll tell you the amount of knowledge that you get from the, the amount of talent that they have at those seminars and at those training uh, facilities, you know, bar, bar none, bar, bar none. Absolutely. So other than that, so again, um, always growing there on the wrestling side, uh, but you've been, you've been uh, other, other ventures as well. Of yeah. course, uh, you know, I think we talked about a lot before you are involved in the media world and the Absolutely. local news and things like that. That's been going great. Yep. Uh, but also you've had appearances and I was just talking about I, I, admitting I have not had a chance to watch it because I need to get through Preacher first. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I need to get caught no, up on no that. Pun, no pun intended because the Rev's here. Yeah, yes. That, yes. <laughs> uh, hey, yeah, exactly. Um, but and on top of that, damn it keeping up with all this wrestling <laughs> it's it's so much man you can't you can't i mean there's wrestling on almost every single it day is, somewhere it is so. and not, not to mention how many there's at least a show a week in pittsburgh yeah that if i'm not shooting it i'm gonna go watch it like i just i just went to fight society for yep. first time in like six months yeah right you have know, a real good thing like going yeah kswa has a great thing going you know uh, you know bro Hummuth was just in the studio it just was in the paper you know uh, locally here on the trip uh but anyways but you were on Castle Rock. Yes, had some some spots on there uh, yeah. on Hulu. Yes, so that, I mean that was a that was a great experience. So I actually filmed at the uh, the uh, closed Moundsville State Penitentiary. Uh, that's right in Moundsville, West Virginia. And um, I was actually there for about a good three to four days straight. Actually, the one time I was supposed to be here was because I was all the way out there. That's when we had the notorious mm -hmm. highway fire and. Mm -hmm. Which was a nightmare from hell. It took why me like was, five why, hours. Yeah, to was get it, home. there was a there was what a tractor trailer was on fire down on seventy. Yes, I seventy complete that. Like I'm talking like, about, like I nine put my car in park. At night. I put my car in park and I walk every good bit of maybe like ten cars ahead just to tell you guys, hey, there's a fire. <laughs> And then you guys find it on social media. It's like, oh, yeah, Rev, oh, well, we'll see you next time. Whenever we <laughs> I'm like, well, that blew my booking. I don't well, know. At least it's not like the time Matt Light canceled. So we, we uh, uh, booked uh, Reaper Matt Connard and made him tell knock knock jokes. So. Hey, hey, <laughs> it, it, was, it was still a Matt. So it really wasn't false go. advertising. There you go. Yeah, you got one. Yeah, you know, there you go. You're, 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 hey, you know, cards subject to change on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah, the, uh, the, uh, show Castle Rock on, uh, Hulu, uh, Stephen King and, uh, JJ Abrams. Um, very good show. Uh, the, the guy that is the, the main character within it, um, is one of the prisoners that kind of pretty much, I'm not, I'm not I don't want to give away, but pretty much appeared out of nowhere. And, uh, a cool scenario behind that is, um, I believe it's, uh, Bill Skarsgård. Um, he is actually the guy that uh, that is the uh, most recent one for the the movie It. He is the most recent Pennywise. So I mean that I mean that was a cool experience on its own, and a lot of great people and producers to work with, and um, definitely some some great and creepy experiences. I mean that prison is huge. Um, there's a lot of things that you really can't explain in person. It just kind of gives you chills, especially as you're you're filming at like two o'clock in the morning and. And you're you're hearing some things that, that really you shouldn't be hearing at certain times, but um, but the the show the show overall was was amazing. We had a couple cool scenes. I think further on there's a there's a few scenes where a lot of chaos happens. Um, I don't I don't know what particular scenes they have. I do know that I get killed in a crazy crazy way. Um, <laughs> that, that they got some like some cool shots off and they were excited about. So, so you're not going to be back for season two. Oh, I guess Stephen King, you could very well. You be. know what? You know what? I'll just come back as a ghost. You know, I'm like I'm not the ghost of Christmas past, but I'm so, I'll probably be some type of ghost if they have me come back. So that's awesome. And I think all episodes are up on Hulu right now. Every so you single can episode, you can binge watch all you want. Do exactly what we do. Just stay up and don't drink coffee. And thank God that you're getting two hours of sleep. This is a cool thing. Like. I, I you know between like that I can go on right now on the on those services and like we can binge the rev over there on uh, on Castle Rock. Yeah, Our friend of the show Rob Johnson is involved in the uh, the uh, uh, Dojo Pro yes. as the announcer, right? And you know him from PXI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so he so he actually worked. Actually, here's a fun fact: if you guys are ever looking for a coffee, what is it? GIF or JIF? I'm still arguing with this. Uh, it depends on which side of the fence you're on. GIF or JIF, G-I-F. If you're looking for one of those, you type in coffee. Yeah. He's going to be the guy in the bathrobe, in the bathtub, pouring like this gallon coffee mug on his head. That's Rob Johnston. But uh, yeah, yeah, great guy. Actually, uh, um, 
uh, Jordan Allen, or people know him in the pulpit as Brother Jordan, um, and I worked with him at WPXI. He was one of the uh, creative service hosts that that uh, did like a lot of interviews with celebrities. But yeah, he actually helped uh, produce that. And when they finally brought it to public, I was I think I was one of the first people that he hit up. He was like, Rev, I couldn't quite talk about it because everything was so hush hush. But he was like, now that it's fully out there. I've been meaning to tell you, like, dude, I've been thinking about you. I really wanted to, like, let you know about this, you know, let you know about this great show. And, uh, you know, by the, by the looks of it, I think it's amazing. I mean, they have uh, MJF on there. They have a few mm-hmm. other people. Uh, Cheeseburger and was could, involved. He, Cheeseburger was a part of it. And um, it, it, it was a really good look at guys that I've, like, maybe heard of about, like, MJF and get to see them in, yeah. in action. Joey Janela, you know, um, especially if you think of Joey Janela as this weird, like, a guy that jumps off a building kind of yeah. thing. Like, it, it, see him in action and see why that's why he's an important figure in indie wrestling beyond that uh and it's on it's on fight and it's on uh, amazon prime yeah yourself's on hulu which get a trial of any of them and, yeah. and just check I have, a, I have a I have a I have a few things it's gonna be a, a quick rough plug but yeah that that's on hulu uh a little bit before that um for a couple people to watch uh the life which is funny the rev was on lifetime well actually i was a little bit <laughs> I, was, I was a little bit more behind the scenes so which means like, my mom has watched you in some lifetime <laughs> television everyone. so so if she watched the uh it, w- it was a show based on um it was a show based on a true story that that involved a uh involved like a school shooting and like a brave secretary helping out that actually had tony braxton on it okay uh, i think i think initially they were going to call it faith under fire but then i think they changed the name of it i was actually on um that a little bit behind the scenes so i was there for about three days with a couple uh great people one of my uh, one of my good friends amy was on there and we were stand-ins for some of the main actors so all the crazy and you know in the film that's all the crazy stuff they have to do with lighting camera angles this that script reading i had to do all of that and then they would shoot in the main people once they say okay we're good to go and then they would go in and knock it out okay and, and then we have to do it again catering's amazing that's why i always do stuff. <laughs> You know, you you. This isn't uh, wrestling wise. You know, the Rev will love money, but moving wise, movie wise, just give me some good catering. You know, mm-hmm. just give me some good catering. So yeah, so that that was on Lifetime. Then there was a show one um, that I was an FBI agent. That's on NBC, NBC Universal, or something something like that. And uh, a few others that are on like Netflix and stuff like that. Mind Mind Hunter. I think that was on Netflix. Uh, they're doing season two right now. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, doing everything but sleeping bro everything but sleeping <laughs> that's how you do it grinding it out uh and then i just randomly find you in pittsburgh uh <laughs> doing other <laughs> jobs as well so many <laughs> i don't know one time you i, I had somebody yelling at me uh, a security guard and i'm like oh great as a, when i was lift driving i totally just forgot like, about that and it's like oh shit it's the rev holy crap and well it, no, that was that was <laughs> i think you were parked illegally Oh, it's definitely parked illegally, you but so totally... was everybody else. Come on, yeah, There's I think, a lot of I, think I think I hit you with the flashlight. First. It's like a, it's like it's like one thirty uh, uh, outside of Tequila Cowboys. I mean, come on, <laughs> it's a madhouse down yeah, there. there. There's no there's no such thing as, as common sense down there. I was like, yeah, so I, w- I was working down there for uh, a while. There, there's been a couple crazy things that happened. Like Frankie Muniz ran- randomly walked in at once. <laughs> so he actually he actually manages a uh, he manages a band that I think one of the nights the band was at Stage A E. And he just randomly walks in. I was like, "Hey, you guys have any menus?" And I worked with a guy there that's uh, uh, that's a Marine veteran and a big, big, stocky guy. And he has a deep voice. He's like, "Hey, Rev, that guy's face looks familiar." And I'm like, "Who?" He's like, "That guy. His face has been on TV. Like, who's what's that guy's name?" And I'm like, "Well, there's a lot of guys that have faces on TV. Like, yeah. Rev's face is on TV. Like, I don't know." And, uh, and then we're looking. I'm like, "Oh my god, dude! Like, that's that's Frankie freaking Muniz." It's Malcolm in the middle. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. So we like, you know, so you know, I, I did, I did kind of mark out on on uh, <laughs> on uh, Frankie Muniz. Well, by the way, if you go to Giphy, uh, I do have the Rob Johnson. If you're on video with us, uh, he's the one on the left, or yeah, on the left of your screen. Oh yeah, I see. Yeah, the, he's the, the coffee the first one, one. There not you go, the watch. one with the cat at the bar. But uh, <laughs> and then then I think he has another one. I don't know if it's oh, on yeah, that list. There's one he's like in a swimming pool with doing, coffee. Yeah, he was doing vines and and everything, and they're just so gifable. So he's a, he's an internet he's internet famous. Yeah, he's a, he's, he's looks, very he, look, he looks famous. like a, like a nice cuddly fella. Yeah. <laughs> like if you, like if you got like a lonely night, we like what well, we have all these apps now. We have like the dog walking app, which my wife just used yesterday. Where I'm like, why would you pay someone to walk the dog? And what well, well, she did anyway, and uh, which is amazing. Like the dog gets a report card and everything um and then but like there's so so many apps but if there's like a cuddling app like rob johnston would totally be on there like he would be made millions 
So see, see what happens I when I don't to, have coffee. I, 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 I give you ideas. To tweet him on that one. Uh, but anyway, so you got another adventure. One of the million ventures that you're yeah. into. You've been with us at Rise Wrestling, Rise with a Y. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you've been uh, uh, trying your hand at commentating. Absolutely. Over there with uh, Paul Atlas. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Jim Lamata over Jim there. Jim Lamata. We uh, we've had some great stuff. You, over you guys, there. it's been good. Uh, it definitely the last show. Like you guys did a three man booth. And just the vibe, like, you know, Paul is the is the veteran guy. Absolutely. You're the kind of loud guy. Yeah. <laughs> I can I can I kinda say I so so I always say this, like if anyone asks like who are you on commentary, I'm like, I'm the guy that kind of looks like Byron Saxton, but I act like Corey Graves in a slight way. Yeah, yeah. So, you know. Um but but yeah, we have we have uh Paul Atlas, um, who is phenomenal. I mean, the amount of knowledge that he has behind him. We have Jim Lamada who's Clearly, like, is a name that speaks for its own in, in Pittsburgh, that he's been doing this for quite some time, uh, even when I first uh, showed up at PWX. And, um, and then, you know, we, ha- we have myself, and, and that was one main thing to where, um, you know, kind of looking at the, the future, because, you know, I, I love this business enough that I do face a reality to where I'm like, you know, if wrestling doesn't pay out or maybe not the full thing is for me, um, still use that media side of me to, you know, continue to, to, to keep alive in the wrestling business. And, uh, you know, um, Brandon Kay and Marcus Mann gave me, a, a, you know, some few opportunities to get the foot in the door. Um, fortunately, they were privileged by, you know, I, I guess a little bit of what I could present. And uh, we decided to kind of make it a, a permanent thing. So I'm, I'm very I'm very happy to have that opportunity. Awesome. Awesome. And our voice over there. Uh, and it's cool to see you kind of in the mix with that, that, that pool of talent as well. Yes. So um, and of course, the big thing as of this recording. Uh, there's a big cage match that's coming up this weekend. Yes, it's been years in the making. Uh, you had this long-standing thing with uh, Chris Taylor down there. Uh, you know the rev is in full force. Yes, and it's been between one that it's kind of crossed over from uh, one promotion to another yes. and continued, which is something that I don't think I've seen to the scale before. It it, ha- um, it hasn't happened, and it's been some of the most uh, interesting and emotional things that I've seen that I've I've shot. Uh, that I've edited, that I've you know, put out there, um, um, I think in all professional wrestling, you know, uh, and it's uh, you know everything from like a an intervention happened <laughs> at one point. We we uh, we, we try we tried a couple of those. Uh, I, I I take it now since we're at this time, we haven't been successful. Yeah, yeah, with the intervention, no, no, yeah. that didn't work out too well. I, I, I think your mom witnessed that in person yeah, that, uh, that time. Uh, <laughs> but, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, mom, I love you. Yes, but you know what? What is it about you know what's been going on with Chris Taylor and this? I know I, I hate to call it a vibe with you guys mm-hmm. uh, this whole time uh, over this. It's, it's culminating, of course, with the uh, steel cage match at Renegade Wrestling Alliance of Aggression uh, this this Saturday, uh, September the first, uh, as well. It's I, I um, you, you know you know it's kind of it's kind of bad and, and weird for me to ex- kind of explain it, but um. Uh, doing a doing a little doing a little backtrack. Um, when when I, I believe he initially came back, uh, I think it was him and Justin Idol. Mm-hmm. Um, that was about two and a half years ago. I think I was already a, a almost a year into uh, being at PWX, and uh, he came in and you know they they shake everyone's hands and and you know people are trying to educate you if you didn't know about people and they're like, hey, this is Chris. He goes by the Prince Sand and. And I'm like, you know, I, I I know a decent amount about him. You know, I, I did my research for for a lot, for a lot of guys, and um, one thing one thing personally with me that I that I really can't wrap my head around is when you know that you have went down a path. I mean, we we've, we've all have been down paths. You know, I'm you know I'm I'm no no saint fully by any means. I've I've had my past as well. But when you get to a point to where now you want to glorify on that. And in my opinion, I feel like with with me being the savior of pro wrestling, I try to tell people that that this isn't just a, a thing. This is this is me. Like this is what I represent every day. Like I go, no matter what company I go to, I look to leave it better than from what I came in. And it seemed like to me his mindset was totally polar opposite of that. And I, I really I really wasn't agreeing with that. And um, you know, we had, we had a few choice words. Um, you know, backstage and, um, you know, I think when it, the way that initially started with uh, with Quinn Magnum at PWX, uh, he's very old school. And uh, if you know anything, it's like, OK, you know, if, if you guys want to do this, you know, put up, put up or shut up and, you know, and, and 
we're going to give you guys some time and say what you want in front of the people, you know, if you're, if you're not scared. And I, I think that's where we got now, fast forwarding two years later, um, you know, certain things happened that, you know, Chris, Chris decided to leave. And, and my whole thing is I'm not, I'm not done with this. Uh, I'm not done with this. So I ventured over, I made a couple phone calls, um, went over to Renegade Wrestling Alliance, talked to, uh, uh, uh Dr. Phil bad, uh, Derek. And, um, he didn't fully know <laughs> what he, he was getting into. He, I, I, I guarantee if, if he knew, he probably wouldn't have brought me over. Um, but when I got there, we, we made it a mission that, 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 that we were going to make a stand. And, uh, that started with first putting Chris through a table. So Chris didn't like that. A lot of people didn't like that. And my, my fact is I don't, I don't come here to have everyone like me, you know, I'm, I'm too, I'm too, I'm too old for that. Like, you know, my, my whole thing is to die by the world's, to live by the world's exception is to die by people's rejection. I'm not willing to die by people not liking me. I'm willing to get a job done, do what I have to do and go home to a family. So is Chris about that? I don't know, but we're going to find out. And I can't wait for that to happen. Is this your first steel cage match? This is the very first. The very first. And I understand that Chris has a little bit of history. I, th- mm-hmm. I think you guys helped film that last year at RWA was his last one. Him in Memphis. Yeah. And I heard that was that was pretty violent. I mean, Chris mm-hmm. took him to the uh, to the limit. Now, th- now, did Chris win that one? I don't. Because I, kn- I, I know I know there was some there were, there was some bloodshed. Yes. So so it was kind of hard to see who had the upper hand, but well, in the end, nobody wins the cage match. <laughs> it's, it's so I'll, I'll 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 share I'll share I'll share this story. the The wife is is not a, a she's a, she's a supporter, mm-hmm. but she's not a fan mm-hmm. of me being a wrestler. She's not a fan. She's a supporter of her husband mm-hmm. Ron L, but she's not a fan of the Rev because she knows by any means necessary that if I have a mission, no matter what it is. I'm going to stick to it and it's going to get done. And if that means putting myself in harm's way, that's what's going to happen. So she knows that I may or may not come home in one piece by midnight on Saturday. And it's a reality that unfortunately she has to face. And, you know, it's something that's in the back of my head, but that's, that's the, that's the price you have to pay. That's, that's the price you have to pay. So we we've been going through this, and 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 as you can see, I mean, it, this has been time after time again. I mean, he brought back Ryan Edmonds. Um, you know, he's been fighting demons. He's brought he brought back Ryan Ryan Mitchell. Like like come on, like how far you got to go with this? And um, you know, my my thing is, you know, you say you want to slay your last demon. Um, here I am, here I am. So. So you you got you guys should know this. Yeah, and I'm mad, I'm mad. Hold up, I'm mad that my man Chachi isn't here because he he's been saying a couple things. He was saying a couple things. He said I was scared. Uh, people said that I wouldn't sign the contract. And um, if I could clarify this uh, one time, I was never scared to sign the contract. Um, some things happened to where Derek wanted to threaten me and said that this is what's this is what's going to happen. We never talked about it. As you know, you have to, or are you, are you okay with this happening? We never talked about it. He said, you're going to be in a steel cage. Cool. He disrespects me. He says different things. Cool. But then he decides to smack me in the face and then says, if you touch me, I'm going to call the police. Does that make, does that make sense? So you, so you, a non-wrestler, smack a wrestler. And then say, if he smacks you back, which I probably could have got away with it and said it was self-defense and just told you to burn the footage or pay you a hefty offering. But <laughs> he says, if you do that. So I thought it was a double standard. I said, you know, based on the disrespect and some of you guys know my history, you know, if I feel I'm disrespected, then I'm going to go to a place that I'm respected. But people thought that I was scared of Chris Taylor and that I wouldn't show up because I was scared of him. So Chris made an offer that I had to sit on. He, he put his career on the line mm-hmm. to where if he loses, then he's not only going to leave RWA, but he's going to retire completely from the sport of pro wrestling, which I personally feel he should have done a long time ago. So if he loses on September 1st, that's going to be his last and final. It's done. It's done. What does a rev do? I do what I've always do. 
I claim my throne as a savior of professional wrestling. And I show you guys what I've been trying to show you since day one, since I stepped foot in this business. So all I know is some somebody's going to leave with a few pints less of, uh, of, of blood, probably. I'm all down for it. I got to risk it. I have nothing to lose, everything to gain. The pretty big one, RWA Aggression, Saturday, September 1st. If you're not there, if you catch this afterwards, of course, it will be available shortly after at IndieWrestling.us as well. The Rev Ron Hunt, I'm sure a lot of people will have a lot of comments for you afterwards. Where can yeah. people find you online? And I know you talk back. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I talk back all the time. So you can find me on Instagram, the Rev underscore Ron Hunt. You can find me on Twitter. You can just type in the Rev Ron Hunt or Ron L. Hunt 7. And then you can also find me on Facebook. Type in the Rev Ron Hunt. If you have something to say, especially if I don't agree with it, I will comment back in two hours or less. Money back guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he doesn't even need that little pop up on Facebook that makes you m message him. <laughs> no, no, they, they, they just know. Just leave a comment somewhere. If I'm tagged in a status and you leave a comment, I, I, I don't sleep. So I, I look I look for idiots. I just look for him and I and I smell him out and then I, I talk to him. And sometimes I wish I didn't because I feel like I drop IQ points, especially with RWA fans. So, well, it looks like uh, uh, Amanda in the chat room is uh, looking for this cage match this Saturday. And we have some other friends of the show. Our friend uh, Rob Johnston actually has popped up. Oh, as well good on the Rob. Internet. Legendary <laughs> Rob Johnston. And so many more. Uh, the Rev Ron Hunt, while I do not always agree with your methods, it's always entertaining to watch and see what comes out of it. I'm looking, uh, I'll be uh, looking very closely uh, through my camera lens, of course, this Saturday with uh, uh, your cage match at RWA Aggression. Uh, I'll be interested to see what happens there. If I can just give you a quick disclaimer, please don't get your camera anywhere near me. Because I promise you, there's no disqualification. So if your camera is near, I might snatch it out of your hands. That might be a problem. That yeah, might be that a might problem. Be a problem. I don't. I don't yeah. want to. I don't want to. Even though I could buy you probably ten more, I don't want to. I don't even <laughs> want to do that. I, so you get cool footage though. So. Well, please support uh, the Rev Camera Replacement Program over <laughs> IndieWrestling.us and the new IndieWrestling.us network as well with uh, a lot of content going on thank you rev for joining us thank you man thank Thanks you for everybody time. that's popped up here on the facebook live i know we kind of came up unannounced this evening but uh we kind of had an opportunity to get together and have this discussion i thought it was really important for the event coming up this week uh we have so much more in the can that's going to be coming up uh uh here on the indie mayhem show uh we have a conversation we had with wcw announcer gary michael capetta and he'll be coming to pittsburgh with uh his Bo beyond body slams returns show as well as uh, another guy who's speaking of Ring of Honor, Joe Dombrowski, who's been a, a, an announcer for the Future of Honor, amongst other things, a premier championship wrestling, just just hitting an anniversary this past weekend. Look for those. Of course, you can find the streams on Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Indie Wrestling US Facebook pages are uh, raw feeds, and those will release in the uh, subscriptions for you guys out there on the podcast and everything. And please support the show, patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. You guys are getting a lot of extra special stuff, especially in the $5 Pocky Club. If you like some of the stuff going on, including secret recording links are Ooh. coming up. Yeah, I just sent out a message today about that. So go check that out. Thank you, everybody, for supporting us. And until next time, please support the US. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.